Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capablanca saga. We are back at the 1911 tournament of San Sebastian where Capablanca faces none other than Karl Schlechter, an Austrian chess master who only a year before this tournament in San Sebastian uh, challenged Emmanuel Lasker for the title and he was this close to winning the, the match. Uh, we already mentioned that uh, first four games ended in a draw, then Schlechter won a game against <coughs> uh, Emmanuel Lasker, uh, then uh, four more games ended in a draw and then uh, Schlechter just needed to draw a game and he would be world champion. Uh, but he started uh, an attack against Lasker in the final game, uh, then he blundered, uh, which resulted in a drawn position and then he blundered again and uh, basically lost the title. Uh, some uh, historians suggested uh, that perhaps uh, Schlechter needed a, a two-point margin to actually beca become world champion, but uh, there were never any evidence to, to these rumors. So uh, it's, uh, I mean, Capablanca also mentioned it in his magazine that he was uh, editor-in-chief in. Uh, he said that maybe, uh, maybe Karl Schlechter just didn't want to uh, win the world chess championship title over a fluke as uh, Alaska blundered in game five. Uh, uh, either way, uh, it, it's a shame because this gentleman, Karl Sechta, could have been a world chess champion after Emmanuel Lasker. Uh, but uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that will be reserved for someone else. Uh, and he was also known to be a, a great gentleman. He's much older than Capablanca here, much more experienced. Uh, here, Capablanca is 22 years old. Uh, Karl Schlechter is, is uh, I believe, 37. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, he was a, a really a huge gentleman. If uh, you were late for your game and uh, your uh, the time on your clock ran out, he would then uh, fix the time on his clock so he would have the exact same time as you, uh, even though you're the one that was late for the game. Uh, and also, if uh, you said that you were ill, you weren't feeling all that great, uh, he would offer you like a, like a mercy draw. Uh, not, not a lot of people would do this. Uh, so maybe, maybe he just saw, I don't think anyone ever came up with this theory, but maybe he just saw that um, he could become world champion, he could beat Lasker, and then he just, uh, you know, uh, went, went in for a suicide game and uh, uh, let, let Lasker have his uh, title. But who knows? Uh, and also, uh, here is a pretty weird image. We already saw one image of all the participants, or, well, not all, but maybe all. Uh, of the 1911 tournament of San Sebastian. Here is uh, an image from the newspapers. There you can see it. Uh, but um, uh, although it names all the players, there you can see uh, in the upper row you have Bern, Marozzi, Leonhardt, Widmar and Mises. Mises did not participate in this uh, uh, 1911 tournament of San Sebastian. Uh, but uh, even though it says Mises here, uh, then uh, sitting in the bottom row from the left, you have Marshall, Bernstein, Duras, Rubinstein, Janowski, Spielmann, Capablanca in the middle. Everyone can see him. Uh, Nimzovic, Teichmann, and Tarash. So uh, there, there is no Karl Schlechter in this uh, drawing that was in the newspapers. Uh, but uh, Mises is there and he, he was not playing in this tournament. So that's a bit weird. I don't know what happened there. Maybe, maybe... Schlechter just wasn't there when they were doing the drawing or I don't know maybe someone just thought that uh, Mises was in the tournament instead of Schlechter but uh, you know it's almost uh, more than uh, it's more than 100 years uh, ago so it's hard to hard to say what happens but if anyone can shed some light to this mystery you know feel free to do so uh, we would all be very honored to increase our knowledge uh, but getting back to the game Capablanca has the white pieces and he opens with d4 uh, we have d5 by Schlechter, knight to f3, knight to f6, and now uh, e3. Uh, bishop to f5, the call system, uh, and uh, now uh, we have c4. Capablanca makes room for his queen to come to b3, as this was his favorite uh, idea when the bishop was uh, a light, the light square bishop was developed very early, so he could develop the queen while pressuring the b7 pawn. Uh, we have c6, uh, queen to b3, now with more pressure to the d5 pawn, but also the b7 pawn is under attack. And queen to c7. Uh, if, in modern times, uh, most likely queen to b6 would be played here, uh, rather than queen to c7. Uh, you'll see why later, but uh, I, I also thought of a crazy idea. I thought, what if uh, this was actually used once to draw the game? Like, for, let's say, queen d1, queen goes back, queen b3, queen goes back. Uh, and I checked the database, no one ever did this, which I'm very glad. I mean, this, it would be a crime against chess if this happened. Uh, but okay, queen b3, queen c7, and now knight to c3. Capablanca keeps on developing, pressures the d5 pawn. e6, uh, adding more protection to the pawn, and now bishop to d2. 
Uh, knight bd7, uh, Schleifta keeps developing, we have rook to c1, and now you can't continue developing because there is the threat of winning the pawn, for example, if bishop e7, now you can see that the rook and queen are occupying the same file, simply pawn captures, pawn captures, knight captures, captures, and queen can capture, the queen on c7 is undefended, here you capture and you lose the queen, a white grab the pawn and will enjoy a, a much better position. So after rook c1, queen back to b6 now. Here, black has to waste a move uh, for this uh, queen c7 to queen b6 maneuver, and you can see that it would be much better if the queen came to b6 uh, instead of c7 altogether, uh, which is why today queen b6 is the move that is played. Uh, but okay, bishop b2, uh, we have h6, and now castles, uh, and bishop to e7. Uh, and here Capablanca decides to trade off queens. We have queen captures, pawn captures, and now a3. Uh, the knight can now move, the pawn on a2 is no longer a target, and uh, black uh, has to be better here, as black has the semi-open uh, a file for, for his rook, but on the other hand, his pawn structure is somewhat messed up. But it's messed up towards the center, so uh, black has to be better here. Uh, we have castles, uh, and now rook f to d1. Capablanca brings another rook into the game. We have rook f to e8, uh, and now Capablanca goes knight to e1. He wants to make room for his uh, pawn to come to f4. Uh, we have bishop to d6, getting the bishop to a more active square. We have f4, and now uh, as Capablanca has pawns on d4 and f4, he does have a hole here uh, on, on e4, uh, and Schlechter uses it. We have knight to e4. Uh, knight captures, bishop captures, and now bishop to d3. Capablanca wants to trade off everything. Uh, we have knight to f6. Uh, bishop captures, knight captures, and... Uh, sorry about that. Knight captures, and now rook to c2. Uh, with ideas of bringing this bishop to c1. Uh, if this bishop can come to c1, then Capablanca can push b4, and uh, the position will be very nice. The bishop from c1 will be guarding the a3 pawn, and uh, the rooks can be doubled, uh, depending on uh, on what black plays, either on the c or on the d file. And here is a, a position where black is definitely better, uh, but uh, Capablanca often uh, went into endgames and he would just outplay his opponents. Uh, but here, to his uh, misfortune, Karl Schlechter plays the absolute best idea. Here he goes rook to a4, with a double attack against the c4 pawn. Uh, so Capablanca has to capture, you cannot go b3 or something as the a3 pawn is weak. So we have pawn captures and now pawn captures, and now there is this threat. For example, if you play something like rook dc1, then capturing the bishop is a threat, because now your pawn on e3 is no longer guarded, simply rook captures and the black would uh, continue, most likely winning this game. Uh, but after e captures on d5, we have bishop to c1, as Capablanca planned. Now b4 is definitely an idea, and the a3 pawn will be protected. Uh, we have b5, Schlechter grabs more space here. Uh, rook to c4 will be an idea in the future, and here we have knight to d3. Capablanca also wants to use the uh, very nice e5 square for his knight, much like uh, Schlechter is using the e4 square for his knight. And uh, here f6 was played, which is a good move. It prevents the knight from jumping to e5, uh, but uh, Spielmann suggested that maybe rook to c4 was a better idea. Maybe knight to e5 isn't such a threat here. Uh, because after rook captures and b captures, now you're gonna force the knight to e5 either way, and now after f5, that black would have a better game here, uh, with the... A, a wise dark square bishop not uh, really seeing all that much action. This rook can come to a8, you can push b5, b4. Uh, it would be... Black would have some moves to play, while Capablanca not really. Uh, but okay, we have f6, and now comes knight to f2. Capablanca used this maneuver, threatening e5 to remaneuver to f2, and now he wants to trade off this very strong knight. Uh, and here, uh, if you try something like, uh, let's say, this to, to push b4 or something, then white can simply capture. And after pawn captures, now white indeed can go b4, prevent the black from going b4, and now everything's protected. The bishop is uh, protecting the a3 pawn, and uh, it, black will not be able to, to break through here. So after knight to f2, we have rook a back to a8. Now if knight captures, the rook can uh, capture on e4, and then black can, if he wishes so, uh, double up rooks on the e file. Uh, knight captures on e4, Capablanca does go for this, we have rook captures and now king to f2, bringing the king into the game. Uh, we have g5 and now g3, strengthening the, the f4 pawn, king to f7, sorry, king to f7, 
uh, king to f3, bringing the king closer into the game, and now h5. And here Capablanca finds a very interesting solution. He plays h4. Now, either trying to get black to push g4 to completely close down the position after king f2, uh, black is going to go f5, and now after b4 is played, it will be very hard uh, for black to break through here. Uh, so Schlechter decided to go for a different approach. G captures on h4, and now not uh, capturing here and allowing rook g8 for black to take hold of the open g file, uh, but instead uh, rook to h1. <clears throat> uh, a very nice idea. Uh, because now if you go uh, something like h captures on g3, it's not a problem. Uh, rook will capture on h5, and this pawn is weak. It will be captured very soon. After king g6, rook h3 is coming, and now after rook to e8, pressuring the e3 pawn, uh, we'll just have rook captures on g3 check, king f5, uh, or, or f5, king f5, and now the other rook can come to h2. Uh, the bishop is guarding the b2 pawn, the e3 pawn, this rook can come to h5 uh, and deliver check. It's actually Capablanca who would be better here. So, after rook to h1, uh, we have f5, allowing white to capture on h4, and then the king will block the position. Uh, we have rook captures on h4 here, king to g6, and now rook c to h2, pressuring the h5 pawn, and now Schlechter has to move uh, the other rook all the way to the king side to help out with the defense of the h5 pawn. We have rook to h8, and now comes b4 finally from Capablanca, and now the whole position is completely blocked. There is no way to break through here, and it was in this position that uh, Jose Ruel Capablanca and Carl Schlechter uh, agreed to a draw in round 9 of the 1911 San Sebastian uh, chess tournament. Uh, the a3 pawn is protected by the bishop, there is no breaking through here. Uh, Capablanca has a very firm grip uh, on the c5 square, so any, any breakthrough will not be possible. Uh, this rook cannot move, it constantly has to keep an eye on the h5 pawn. This rook, if you gave it all the moves it wants, it would still not find any any purpose. So there's there's simply no way of black to break through here, and but also there's no way for white to break through here. So a draw is uh, well an understandable result. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's round nine of the 1911 San Sebastian tournament. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you are enjoying the coverage uh, so far. Uh, once again, if anyone can shed some light on this mystery from the newspapers, why there, why Mises is there and Carl Schlechter is not, uh, I would be, I would be very happy. Uh, but you know, it's it's just weird. <clears throat> uh, so yeah. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Fernando Esteves de Oliveira, Paul Hurst, uh, Henrik de Vries, uh, Dame Pletvarez and Marcel Fernandez for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching and I will see you soon, uh, hopefully with some more interesting content. Uh, yeah, thank you all and have an excellent rest of your uh, Friday.